Guy the hatchet wielding hitchhiker was an internet sensation about a decade ago. He went viral after saving a woman by hitting her attacker with a hatchet. But just a few months later, Kai was arrested and convicted of murder. Now a documentary about his rise and fall is one of the top films on Netflix, and it stars our very own Jessa Breisbeck. As CBS 58's Mike Kirkhoff sat down with Jessa to talk about what it was like to make the film and the impact he and Kai had on each other's lives. Well, it's good to be the champs. Almost 10 years ago, Jessup Reisbeck was a sports reporter in Fresno, California, asked to fill in as a news reporter. An absolute bizarre scene here in West Fresno at the corner of McKinley and Marks. A man claiming his Jesus. Jessup came upon a wild story and an eccentric young man named Kai. I'm Kai. Who Jessup later dubbed the hatchet-wielding hitchhiker. Smash, smash, smash. Kai only talked to Jessup, only gave Jessup his email address, and then he left. Knowing he was the only reporter in the world with that connection and with that interview, Jessup uploaded it to YouTube. It was an instant hit. Jessup says it had half a million views overnight. The story of what came next, Kai's rise to internet fame and descent, eventually leading to him being imprisoned for a New Jersey murder, is chronicled in the smash hit documentary, The Hatchet-Wielding Hitchhiker leading to a variety of emotions for Jessup. It's amazing to be, it's once in a lifetime stuff to be number one on, on Netflix, you know. Um, but uh, it sucks that um, he's sitting where he is and, and another guy's dead. And as I'm doing this interview... Jessup says the reaction to the film has been unbelievable. On the other side of the road... Tons of uh, love and, and uh, praise for the, for the story, for, uh, you know, the documentary itself. It's been overwhelming, man. Documentary crews were reaching out to Jessup to tell Kai's story. After he chose the filmmakers, Jessup was a crucial part to both the making of the film and the story in the film. You know, I was providing a lot of the contacts, a lot of the, you know, the people that you saw in the documentary, um, a lot of the video, a lot of the pictures, and uh, a lot of the information about Kai. And, and I was a middleman between the, the documentary company and Kai. I was in contact with Kai the entire time. He's calling right now. <laughs> Kai. Hello? Also, kind of this, the, the guy that wove the story together, kind of the storyteller, if you will. To do that, Jessup flew to California in October of 2021 for three very long days in rented homes for the film shoot, not only doing the interviews, but shooting recreation scenes as well. So they just kept saying, like, nope, keep swimming. So they're getting, like, all these different camera angles, and then they end up just using me taking my shirt off and jumping in the water, you know? So I was a little disappointed that uh, they made me swim, like, 20 laps, uh, and that's all they used. He also wishes they could have spent a little bit more time on the mental health aspect of the story. This right here is one of a friend. And this was 10 years ago, too, so it wasn't in... Mental illness wasn't in the forefront as much as it is now. No matter what you've done, you deserve respect. Even if you make mistakes, you're lovable. And it doesn't matter your look skills or age or size or anything, you're worthwhile. You know, he, he could have he could have had anything and everything in the world. And um, it's just it's just not what he wants. He didn't want it, and that's totally okay. A sad and brutal turn to what was such a great story. Do you think you would be where you are today without Kai? Career-wise, yes. I mean, you know, I, would, I, I firmly believe, like, I would be a, a news a evening news anchor in Milwaukee if, if that had never happened. Would I have the life experiences and, and the, the emotions and the knowledge and, and be the person that I am without having done that? Absolutely not. Do you think he would be where he is without you? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it depends <laughs> how, that, how you mean that, and part of it's heartbreaking to think about it, and part of it is, I mean, the short answer is, um, I don't know. Um, you know, as far as if I wasn't the only one that he talked to, he probably if I wasn't reporting news that day, he probably would have talked to someone else. As crazy as things got here, and for Jessup, his first day as a news reporter turned into something he never expected. You know, I, I was just a human being and a journalist trying to do all I knew how to do to help him. Such a compelling story, and now we see Kai calling you. We yeah. see your original interview with him from 10 years ago, but we don't see him interviewed in the documentary, and why is that? Yeah, not new interviews. They do intersperse him within yeah. the, in the documentary, yes. as you know, um, but he he could have been in the documentary. Raw Production, the, the team that made the, the documentary, 
had many conversations with about being in the documentary. They wanted him in the documentary. I thought it would have been a great opportunity for him to tell his side of the story, but in the end, he just decided he didn't want to risk any of his appeals process on appearing in a documentary. Uh, he did give me his blessing to be in the documentary, which meant a lot. You know, he said, um, you know, if I want anyone talking about me, it's you. So that was great. And, uh, you know, hopefully now uh, something good comes out of it for him. And, uh, you know, he gets some maybe move to a better facility, mental yeah. facility, and uh, out of that terrible prison, and maybe a retrial, and uh, some of his side of the story comes to light another way. Still an emotional yeah. story 10 years later. Yeah, All right. definitely. Jessup, thank you so thank much. You, and uh, now we're going to